there, it's Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thank you for being here. Today's channel is with the actress, very well-known actress, old Hollywood type. Her name is Ms. Judy Garland, so we'll welcome her energy in. I'm trying to be on good manners here because I will tell you a little bit of the backstory as um, Judy is, may I call you Judy? She's like, well, you might need to call me Ms. Garland <laughs> because, and let me tell you why. Um, I wasn't sure I wanted to channel her. Her energy, I own, I know of Judy Garland from The Wizard of Oz, of course, I know that. And when I feel her energy, it doesn't feel warm and fuzzy. Like, I don't want to hug her. And it doesn't necessarily feel evil, but it doesn't feel positive. It feels kind of devoid a little bit, like there's not, I'm just not really feeling all excited to talk with her, but I want to give her an opportunity to share with me, to talk to me about her life and to talk to me about the afterlife and to talk to me about why it is that I would feel this kind of energy around her. And she's getting really close to me and to my face now, which is kind of odd. I usually spirits don't do that when I channel in the afterlife, but she's like, don't you love me? Love me, love me, is what she's saying. She's like, love me, love me, love me, is what she's saying. Love me, won't you love me? And I'm like, whoa, that's dramatic. I'm like, okay, my dear, okay, my dear, you don't have to prove yourself. Please have a seat, if you'd like. I feel like I need to give her a seat. This sounds really weird, but there's not a chair here, but I feel like I, let's create a spiritual chair for you. It has to be beautiful. It's like, um, like a, a seashell-like backing of a chair and it's like in a lounge and it's all like an ivory white and it's tufted in the back and that's what she's sitting on. Have a seat, my dear. <laughs> that broke the ice, thank you. Thank you for that, I appreciate that. Um, energy's shifting, feeling different, feeling a little better, thank you to my spirit guide who hangs out at the door as a doorman, a bodyguard to help me balance the energy. Thank you for that as well, acknowledgement there. And um, so may I call you Judy? Of course, of course you may. Of course you may, she says. She's very proper, very appropriate. And um, she showed up as I recognized her, <laughs> which was like I said in the whole uh, Wizard of Oz thing. And instead of wearing the blue checkered dress, it was gold checkered dress, which is solar plexus, which is spirit. And the life purpose, connection to God, creator, source. It's a, it's a high vibrational energy. And so when she sh when I saw her in that, I'm like, yes, I will channel her. Uh, yes, I can channel you. So have a seat, um, get comfortable. All right, so I do know that Liza Minnelli is your daughter. And I, so I do know that. I also know that you didn't live together. There's, I don't understand all that. I just know that she grew up in um, California, and, uh, I think Hollywood. I don't know what part of LA, but um, when lived with her dad, and I know that, and her stepmom. I know that part. I do know that. Um, I also know that you were born and raised in Minnesota. And she says, yes, just like you. She's like, just like you. Well, we have something in common. That's good. I've actually been to the museum, the Judy Garland Museum, like 25 years ago. Like right after I graduated from college, we went there and we camped up there somewhere. So I don't really remember what was in there or anything really that I saw about your life. I'm, I, I don't mean to be rude at all. I just, I really don't know. And so I'd like for you to let me get to know you through your spirit energy in the afterlife through the, the energy that you are now as you've evolved. So first of all, it feels like you've transitioned and crossed over. Is that accurate? She says, yes, yes, but it took some time. It, she says, it took some doing. Oh, you had to work, you had to like, it's, it, it's all about, she says, like in Hollywood, it's all about who you know. It's all about who you know. It's all about who you know. It's all about those who you know, who you know, who you know, she says, it's all about who you know. And that inner circle and so okay I can see that and like I see another actress looks like um oh my gosh I see Donna Reed 
Oh my gosh. And now I know who Donna Reed is and what she looks like from the whole It's a Wonderful Life thing. I see Donna Reed. Okay, just image flash. Psh, psh. Um, also see Greta Garbo. I think. I don't know if I see her because I don't know what she looks like. I know what Donna Reed looks like, but I see an image of Greta Garbo. I see an image of what looks like a Lia... Liz Taylor. Okay. All right. Um, feels like these are people that you've been around in Hollywood. Yes. Um, it, it's kind of the vibe I get. It's like frenemies. <laughs> people you compete with that you're nice to. Oh, darling. Yes, nice to see you, darling. Nice to see you. You know, like kiss, kiss kind of thing. But really, it's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Watch your back. Watch your back kind of thing. I see her drinking, holding like a, it looks like a martini glass, but it's fancy, maybe a little champagne glass. I see her in a gorgeous now vel, um, satin dress. Reminds me of something I would see maybe uh, like an Audrey Hepburn in. There, all of a sudden she just went, gave me a look like Audrey Hepburn. No comparison, she says no comparison. I'm like, okay, literally it looks like a black, dress, satin, has a little bit of a rounded neck, could be a little more square looking, I can't quite tell from the side, a little cap sleeve, it's a beautiful neckline though, just a nice, almost like a boat neck or a rounded kind of neck, and gorgeous collarbones, there we go, and then um, empire waist, and then there's like a, kind of like a little sash or something that comes across to the chest here, and then there's like a, um, I don't know if there's a button or a, almost like a bow that's flat or a square thing. There's something in the center. And then I see her, um, I see her liking to wear gloves, like wearing gloves, long gloves that match the color. So this dress looks black, but I can't tell if I'm looking black and white or red. She's like, at the time that we switched to color, she said, at the time that we switched to color. So there's a, pl a point in time where movies went from black and white to color and she was right on the cusp of that era. Like she moved in rather quickly into the colorized era, colorization era. I see her having um, kind of um, challenges and relationships and uh, multiple husbands. My, I see four, I don't know if they're, four dash six, I don't know what that means, maybe loves of my life kind of thing. Um, uh, I just heard the name, last name, Kelly. Um, I see her like in a kind of a pale yellow, uh, like 1950s style dress kind of thing and I see her laying on a couch and the couch is like ivory and I see her just oh, like upset and I don't know if she's acting but she's like oh she's crying and it's like a love situation where um it's not working out the marriage is ending the relationship is ending um I see that and again it's like a pale yellow dress very simple kind of like a sheath dress type of a thing and she's just oh and she's very upset um I don't mean to be so dramatic. I'm really not an actress, but she could bring it. I will give you props, my dear. You can bring it. The drama department, dial it up, call in Ms. Judy Garland. Very, very bring it kind of a thing. Um, so did you play the good girls or the bad girls? She says, I played both, all, everything. But I don't want to be cast as a mother. Oh, you don't want to be cast as a mother. Okay. Like, do you mean in real life? Like, to your children? Do you have more than one? I know she has a daughter, Liza Minnelli. But I feel like there may have been a boy or other a miscarriage or other pregnancies if there's not actually a boy. If you don't have a son, it feels like there's actually a missed opportunity. I don't want to be too personal. And I... A miscarriage or an abortion or something I don't know um, she worked hard and she's tough as nails um, but she also wears her heart on her sleeve so that's an interesting combo she's she's giving me the sense that I worked really I worked hard like my knuckles to the bone I'm and I'm tough as nails you gotta be tough you gotta be tough in this business don't be crying you don't need to be crying the only crying you do is in front of the camera 
I feel like that kind of thing. Like she's saying that. Like, nah, 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 nah. like she's really hard on herself and on, I feel like on other people. So maybe this is why Liza's not wasn't really part of her life or growing up with her mo mother. I also feel like um, Judy traveled a lot and was like a way or was away a lot. And I feel like her wanting to be in New York. And I also feel her wanting to be, I feel her wanting to be in New York. I feel that, a draw to that. So I don't know if she married somebody. It looks like she might've married, at one point she married a businessman and he like, I'm, I'm, I'm keep going to New York. Could be New Jersey, like Atlantic City, New Jersey. I don't know. Um, I think it's New York. I'm, I'm brought that way. Like I literally see the Statue of Liberty. That's how I know where I'm at. I see stuff. Um, and like a businessman, businessman. Mm. I see her liking fashion, like caring about what she's wearing and wanting to be put together. Like no wrinkles. I do not want wrinkles. Like I would not want to be this woman's assistant. Let me just tell you. Mm -mm. She says, I want to say perfection or perfect. And she says, always your best. You must always bring your best. Always bring your best. Look your best. Be on your best behavior. I think there was a lot of pressure that she maybe would have put on her child. So I totally would not want to have to deal with that. Very high expectations, high standards, hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work and effort. I see her dancing. I don't know if Julie Gar Judy Garland danced, but I see her dancing, like tap dancing. <laughs> I see her tap dancing, like dancing. Do, do, do. Like maybe with Dan and Kay or somebody, you know, like do, 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 dancing, tap dancing, dancing. She may have been in a musical or something. The romantic movies. I could see her cast multiple times in romantic movies. And she looks really young to me. Like she looks like, she, I know she has a repertoire of movies, a lot of movies that I don't know about off the top of my head. I have no idea. I just know the one, the big one that everybody knows, multiple generations that lives throughout all time, which is Wizard of Oz. I feel like there's one where she's like a farm girl, a girl on a farm, and she falls in love with a, a man who like they can't be together or she can't have and she's just upset about it. Mama, mama, but I love him. Kind of an energy, you know, I, that one, I see her showing me that, that movie. I don't know what that movie is, but I also see her, I see her so versatile. Like I do see her literally like she could dance. She could be in a musical. I don't know if she sings. I can hear her voice. She has a sweet voice. I think she can sing and dance. She's like, I, I can do all of it, all of it. Um, I feel like there's some things she wouldn't want to show me or tell me about her life experience, which is probably the stuff I feel about her, but her attitude, her energy attitude is so not like, hey, friendly, warm, fuzzy. Like, I wouldn't want to hug you. She says, I wouldn't want you to hug me because I don't want to be wrinkled. She smells good. And it looks like very specific French perfume type of a thing, like something really classy, elegant, expensive. expensive. Um, Coco Chanel comes forward, Chanel, Chanel. I don't know if Chanel is the scent she's wearing or if she was actually friends with Coco Chanel. I don't know, I don't know that. If you know that, put it in the comments below. She smells good, but it's a very specific scent, very specific perfume, one very specific perfume. She likes to, she wants to be considered sophisticated and classy. That's what she wants to be considered. Um, but I also see her falling down drunk. I'm just going to say, I, we, uh, so Judy, so from this, I, I recognize that you're a spirit in the afterlife. You're totally transcended that you're, you are not bound by your human experience and should not be judged by that as well as neither should anyone. We shouldn't be judged by that. The choices we make are the choices we make and forgiveness and releasement of guilt is a really powerful healer in the afterlife. And I feel like your daughter's done a lot of work to try to forgive you. Is that correct? She said, now there's an emotion, the throat, she's choked up. Yes, for all of the problems I've created for her, I created for her. For all of the problems I created for her. Like she, Judy is taking responsibility for some problems in, um, in Liza's life. Some difficulties, some challenges for her. And 
Mm-hmm. Like I see her falling down drunk is what I see. I see a lot of, I see an on again, off again, on again, off again. Like I'm trying to get better, like less, like it seems like when she was getting really ready for a movie role, she would stop. Mm. I want to say stop drinking so much. I feel kind of rude saying that, but she would dial back and try to get into focus for the work and she would change her eating habits and her sleeping habits. But it looks like she, like I'm, I'm seeing her in like 12, 6, 14, 16 hour days and I see her having trouble with sleep. She may have taken medication to sleep, to, to go to bed, to wake up. Like, I mean, like when she was in a, she's talking about being in a demanding film schedule is when um, she laid off the alcohol. It looks like less alcohol, but more um, prescription medication, it looks like, uh, to keep you up, to lay you down. You always have to be spot on. You always have to be like ready, just ready, ready, you know. Um, you can't be depressed and laying in bed. Nobody, that doesn't work for Judy Garland. You can't do that. But it looks like she's had a breakdown. It looks like she had a breakdown, I'm going to say. And again, Judy, obviously, and for you who are watching, it's not to dig up or thrash through the history of the most recent lifetime, but it helps us as people recognize that there is healing in the afterlife. There can be peace and, and as demonstrated with you. And she's showing me different aspects of herself. I actually see her blonde. Why would she be blonde? Maybe she played a blonde and maybe she had a blonde wig in a movie or something, but she literally, I just see her like with blonde and then like little red bows or something in her hair, like something blonde. Like, did you always want to be blonde or what? There's some kind of an, a reference. This is important for something. I'm not sure what, if you know, put in the comments below. So I can feel a struggle. I feel like literally you had a breakdown and like mental institution or going into a hospital or something. Like I almost died like three times, she says, like three times. I almost died like three times. And um, people try to cover that up, but the insiders, they know exactly what's going on. Like I see her going into the back of the hospital, like Cedar sinai kind of thing, like in the back of the hospital and being taken care of. I see them pumping her stomach and trying to save her. I don't know if she tried to kill herself. Did you try to kill herself? Did you try to kill yourself? Mm, that's controversial. I'm feeling like yes on many occasions. But I think she's being dramatic a little bit, like not literal. Like I don't literally see her. I do see her taking too many pills to try to end her pain. And in the moment, yes, trying to kill herself to get done, be done with life, be done to exit, to exit. But then I see her also acknowledging that many of the choices that she made, reckless choices. Like I see her driving and not Ah, uh, like a James Dean kind of thing. Oh, we could get into so much with you because you have like, there's men all around you, like Hollywood types. Um, and then some of the names I don't recognize either. Like I see, I don't know if I see a car accident or if that's a metaphor, but I see her driving recklessly. Oh, bad, bad, reckless, reckless, bad. Bad things can happen when you don't care, when you just don't care anymore, you just don't care, when you don't feel a thing, when you don't feel anything. Like that's, she's trying to numb, just don't feel anything, don't feel anything. I feel like somebody was, oh boy, I feel like uh, somebody was either murder, murdered or died horrifically very close to her. And I feel like that may have led to her many downward spirals. I see multiple, three times, really going down, really going down, really going down. I wasn't meant to live a full life, she says. I wasn't meant to live a full life. Could you see me in an old folks home? No, <laughs> no, darling, no. <laughs> 
never, never. I see her being attracted to Europe, like liking Europe, um, France, Paris in particular, and maybe they loved her there, I don't know, but I see her there. I see her as, as a stage actress too, like wanting not just to be on film, but wanting to act, act in theater. But the movie star thing, she's like, the movie star thing is so, it just eats you up. It swallows you whole, she says. It swallows you whole. It looks like she was involved in some, um, I don't want to say racketeering. That sounds horrible. I don't even really know off the top of my head what that means. But it feels like she got involved in some people that maybe financially backed her career or her agent or someone around her felt like they were, it feels like they were corrupt. And so unintentionally, perhaps she got involved too deeply, let's say that, too deep into some things that weren't legal or on the up and up, let's say that. It was around her a bit. I feel her getting hit too, like getting slapped and other not abusive things. I see uh, somebody's hitting, hitting her. To be honest, somebody's beating the tar out of her is what it looks like to me. That's a horrible thing to have to feel. I think it was a husband. I'm sorry for that experience. She said, now this is why, this is the point of these, these connections, isn't it? To share the truth, not to, not to share the pain. There's no, there's no purpose in that pain, reliving pain or spreading the pain around. So Judy, what is the purpose of that? To recognize that you manifest. You make this whatever you choose to make it. This is your movie, this lifetime. And that might seem like a big responsibility, but you are the cast, the crew, the director, you are the star, you are everything. Now that is power, that is true power. That is influence. That is knowing someone. That is the true power. Your, your power. She's talking about strength and having integrity is a value that she would love to have embodied, but did not, she says. It isn't as picture perfect as it may seem. There are lots of stories behind the scenes in Hollywood. And the truth of the matter is, is the Hollywood types are people just like your people. And there's time for you. There's time for you. You have time. Don't waste it. Don't waste it with people who don't deserve you, who don't love you, who don't want more for you than you want for yourself, who don't see you as that star in the sky, that infinite intelligence and wisdom, that, that my dear, that is who you are. That is who you are. Thank you for that. Something very interesting was happening as I was connecting and now I can't, I see multiple layers of reality right now. As I'm looking at you and I'm looking at her energy, I can see the verberation, how people can see auras kind of a thing, but I see this light like looking through a, a crystal, a glass 
crystal bowl and seeing multiple layers. That's how, what I see right now, which I know that I was in pure connection with you, bringing forward what it is that you intend to share. There's so many things we could go through, Judy. I would love to, I'm sure the audience would love to hear more about relationships and affairs, <laughs> all the juicy stuff, right? The gossip. But I think that they would also like to hear more about your career and things that you felt were important and, and things that you maybe felt like you missed out on. I would like to explore more of these things with you in the future. If if you are interested in, in hearing more of those things, please post your questions in the comments so that in the future, when we connect and we channel with Judy Garland, we can share with you what it is that is most helpful for you, most helpful for you at this time in your life. Wow, this is really profound. My mind is like, I, I, like I said, I feel like I'm in multiple places right now, so I need to kind of, when I'm done with this video, I'll do some grounding, some just clearing of myself. I'll probably walk. That usually is a good way to ground myself and reconnect back into real human life. So this is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thank you for being here. Remember the purpose of this channel is to inspire your spirit, to give you hope, to fill you up with hope. It's your life, so live it. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Judy.